Well, I gotta say, I'm pretty happy with my broad beans this year. Look how nice they're looking. Looking really, really nice. And I forgot to do them last year. Uh, so these are actually January sown. Uh, they weren't overwintered. And we have actually, I've just spotted. Look, broad beans. Um, so on the whole these are looking really really great. The flowers are obviously going over now. They are looking nice healthy plants But we are now starting to get a little bit of black fly Now you can try and just squash and squish, but they love the growing tips and so the best thing to do is come in and Just take out that tip and now I've removed that whole aphid colony. I can feed that straight to the chickens They'll love to snack on that and I don't want to get the broad beans getting too tall anyway because now what's happening is they'll put all the energy into these faded and pollinated flowers. Can you see, I've just seen another huge stem of aphid. See, look at this stem, crawling with it. Now I'm actually going to sacrifice these few flowers to save what's below, so let's just take that off there. Look at those. So those are going to go straight into the chicken run. And I will keep my eye on all the growing tips of this and as soon as they appear, you can see obviously I've cut it off here and I've cut it off on a couple of others. But this one, for example, is completely clear at the moment. It's still got some flowers. But I'm keeping an eye on them constantly and then as soon as the aphids appear, I'm taking them off. But we should have a nice crop of delicious, look at this one, delicious broad beans. Well, I just thought I would catch you up to date with the ducks and the ducks really are not ducklings anymore they are lovely little khaki campbell ducks um so they're out down with the chickens now the prevention zone so the avian flu prevention zone for england has actually been lifted so uh we were supposed to be practicing good biosecurity anyway um but now we can obviously pop everything in together which i have done and the one thing i will say about ducks is crikey they are messy so this is their pond and this is everything that's come out of their pond yep if you want a dry coop don't have ducks um so they are growing really really well they are being harassed by the chickens they're still finding their uh their place within the chicken coop and i'm still trying to find a decent way of making sure their drinking water doesn't get eradicated so far I've done this. So I've got a tub of the water and I've put mesh over the top so they can still put their heads in and drink but they can't spill it everywhere. I've also put it inside a, a grow bag tray so that it prevents all of the moisture spilling all over the sawdust because that's the other issue I've had. The sawdust has just got sopping wet. This seems to be working to some degree but it's not by any means a, a great fix. Um, but it's working for now. But it's just lovely to see these duckies having fun, popping into their pool. And I think I've got a drake and two uh, hens. So that is me just watering my little peach tree. I'm really happy with this little peach tree. <coughs> I actually found this as a stone. It was just a, a peach stone thrown into a flower bed and it had uh, germinated and this is the second year and it's grown into this. Now I have no idea whether it will be any good for fruiting. Um, obviously it, the plant that it came from fruited and was uh, not sterile because it's produced this lovely little tree but whether this actually goes on then to flower and fruit I don't know but it was a free and I'm assuming it's a peach, I think it's a peach stone. Um, lovely little tree. So I've actually been keeping it in the greenhouse, so it's nice and warm, giving it lots of water. I've just potted it up, and I'll pot it up again as the growing season goes on. But if anybody knows about growing peaches, and indeed whether this actually even is a peach, uh, then please let me know. Well, if you watched yesterday's new series, The Chick Check, you will know there are new chicks. And here they are. hiding under here. Hi guys! So there are four of them and they are featuring in our new Chick Chicks. We're going to follow them for three months. 
see how they develop. They're lovely little things. So they are actually from the layers flock. I did a random assortment of eggs and we only had four hatch. I only put in nine eggs, I think. And they were all fertile, but a couple of them had the red ring of death. Um, but they're nice little birds. And you can see this one in front, this little sort of gingery one, is a Poland of some form, I think. Um, and then the one at the back, I'm wondering whether it might be an I am across. And then we've got these other two little ones. They're already, you know, they're only a couple of days old. They're already getting their wing feathers. Delightful little guys. So make sure you check in with our new series. Uh, it will take the place of chicken check-in on a Wednesday. Uh, and it'll be chick check. And we're going to follow these little guys all the way from tiny chicks to adulthood. So it should be fun. Look, I have an apple. So I have to say, I don't seem to be very good at growing fruit, especially in this whole cordon system. So my plum, I had tons of flowers and they all fell off. And then my apple, I had tons of flowers and the majority have fallen off. I mean, down here, I've been watering it loads and I had loads of flowers down here and they're almost all gone. In fact, I don't really see any fruit still on here at all. But up here, there are a few. So there's a little one in there and there's a couple here and I will just be happy. Oh, he's so loud. I'll be happy just to get a couple of apples off this tree. So let's hope that these develop into proper little Brabans that I can pick and I can eat. Um, and we'll see how we go. And I need to learn about fruit growing because as I say, I don't seem to be very good at it. So I wanted to give you a quick update on the incubator situation. So we have two incubators running at the moment. The first, as you know, let's start with this one. So this one, I'm gonna, let's open them up and take a look. So, here we can see uh, green and white eggs. So these are actually the pheasant eggs that were under that broody hen. Now she just wasn't sitting very well. Uh, there are a lot of eggs for one hen to manage. And I found that she was coming off the nest, she was grouping like six up and just sitting on six um, and not the others. Um, so we've got these, uh, them all in here instead. So these are Lady Amherst and these are Reeves. Uh, so these Reeves are bought, were bought online um, so they were obviously sent to us. The Lady Amherst also was sent to us in the post. This is the egg that Eve laid a couple of days before she died. Uh, so she might have mated with Adam. Um, so that's in there. And then this is an egg from one of my friends, um, hence the F, and that's a Reva's egg as well to see if that's fertile. So we've got a load of pheasant eggs in. That's the first lot. And they are at the very beginning of their hatch. So they're literally on like day three, I think. And they take 28 days. So they're going to be a while. Now this second incubator um, is a bit of a confusion because it's got two sets of eggs in it and they're at different dates. Now that is probably a big no-no uh, for normal, but I, I know what I'm doing. So hopefully it's all going to work out right. So firstly, we have guinea fowl eggs. So these are guinea fowl eggs. And they're due to hatch in about six days time. And then around them, these, one, two, three, four, five, six, these are I am Samani and they've only just started. And my thoughts on this is that I need to raise the humidity for the guinea fowl hatch, which is no problem at all, because these are very in the early stages of development. So if I rise the humidity early on, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to drown anything because they're going to have plenty of space doing it. And then I've still got enough space at the end of the hatch to change the humidity and make sure the air cell is big enough. So these should be coming out uh, in literally four or five days. And these are the obviously now I am Samani's um, three weeks they take so they should be taking another couple of weeks um, so that's up to date on all the incubation well I am properly happy because look the honeysuckle has flowers so I still can't believe that this was two little cuttings that I took last year and now if you look this is one all the way up around here and then this is the other. And they've come up really, really well. And 
they are producing tons of flower stems and flower buds so soon this should smell really really nice it's a yellow variety um, that I took the cuttings from and really all of this needs to be tied in and I probably will get around to that at some point but you know I've been very busy um, but it's really really nice to see these starting to flower and they should look really nice and they should smell gorgeous and then obviously after they flower they will all then start for the rest of the year to go mad in terms of growth so then we should get this trellising completely covered and get a proper screen up Thank you.